Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about the Xeon 1650 as a potential alternative to something like the Ryzen 5 1600. In my last video, I talked a lot about that platform being a little bit cheaper because it's older hardware, but also with the performance numbers of the 1650 coming very close to a Ryzen 5 1600, though it is worth noting the 1600 will absolutely outperform it both in single-threaded and multi-threaded tasks. Um, if you overclock your 1650, you can definitely get a lot closer to a Ryzen 5 1600's performance, and it is fully capable of hitting that 4.3, 4.4 gigahertz mark, provided that you put it on an X79 platform. And today we're gonna look a little bit more at some of the things you actually give up by getting onto the X79 platform versus something like the uh, B350 platform that I'd recommend for a Ryzen 5 1600. So on screen here, we have the Ryzen 5 1600 with a B350 motherboard and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3000 megahertz. And you'll notice the total price right now as of filming is about $375. Now, if we hop back over to eBay here and look at the cheapest X79 motherboard that we can find here, uh, which is $80, there are a couple things physically with the motherboard itself that you are giving up by putting yourself on an X79 platform instead of a B350 platform. First and foremost, you'll notice there are only two RAM DIMM slots here, uh, and that will mean that if you're going to get 16 gigabytes of RAM, you need to get two 8 gigabyte sticks instead of something like a 4x4 kit. And the other thing that physically jumps out is the one PCIe by 16 slot, which you get with this particular motherboard. But also notice there that that 24 pin ATX power uh, connector is on the left side of the socket instead of on the far right side like we're normally uh, used to seeing. So there are physically some quirks with this motherboard, but it is the cheapest out there right now at just $80. Now, if you're looking to buy something a little bit more expensive to get a couple extra features here, there are other uh, X79 motherboards that aren't really, really expensive, but do give you a couple better features. For example, uh, down here we have this uh, Intel X79 motherboard, which has looks like four DIMM slots for your RAM. So you have a little bit more upgradability there. Maybe you start with 16 gigabytes and a 2x8 kit, and you can always add more later. Um, also, then it has a couple PCIe by 16 slots instead of just the one. But again, that 24-pin ATX power connector is to the left side of the socket, which again, is kind of a, an awkward place to put it, but it's there regardless. So you just kind of have to work around that when you're assembling your computer. Also worth pointing out here is that when I made my last video, the cheapest 1650 on eBay, eBay uh, was actually $100 flat and right now the cheapest one that I could find is $114 so they look like they're a little bit usually more expensive than that $100 price point so do expect more to pay like $115 if you're tracking one down. Now with these X79 motherboards you'll also notice you're giving up NVMe drives altogether with them um, as an option completely so if you don't use NVMe drives at all already you're already in good shape but if you do rely on them X79 platforms are just not for you. And then of course, compared to most B350 boards, you're also giving up USB 3.1. However, that's something that you could always add in with a, a PCIe card uh, if you have the PCIe slots on your motherboard to do so. So that's less of a big deal than the NVMe drive, uh, but it is something to be aware of that you would have to add in a little bit more cost if you really want to add something like a USB Type-C port. But my recommendation there is unless you really need the extra data transfer speed, I would just get a cable that's like a Type-A to Type-C cable, especially if it's for something like your phone. Um, you're probably more worried about just charging it than actually transferring files off of it anyways. But if file transfer is important to you, then absolutely invest in that add-in card. And then the last thing you give up, and it's probably the biggie, is that with the Ryzen system, you have a very clear upgrade path moving forward. If you get yourself on a B350 platform, and especially if you're starting out with a Ryzen 5 1600, you can actually, with a BIOS update, just hop straight into the Ryzen 5 2600, or maybe even the Ryzen 7 2700, so you get a newer generation processor as well as an upgrade if you went to the 2700 and although this is not guaranteed and definitely not confirmed it is still possible that the third generation Ryzen chips may even work on the original B350 boards and X370 boards as well so there's definitely an upgrade path for the Ryzen system whereas with the Xeon system it's not that there aren't processors that are stronger than the 1650 that could go into an X79 motherboard the problem is those processors are really really expensive for what you're getting you are not going to find an 8 core processor that competes on a price level with the Ryzen 7 processors on those older Xeon platforms. Now, you can definitely find some Xeon 
octa-core processors, but they're going to be quite a bit more expensive than the Ryzen 7s. In fact, I think the, the cheapest Ryzen 7 I've seen was a Ryzen 7 1700, which at one point was on sale for $200 flat, which is just an unbelievably good value for new hardware. So there really wouldn't be any reason to keep on old hardware when you have such a really solid upgrade path or just a path to buying an 8-core 16-thread processor. However, the 6-core 12-thread Xeons still represent a pretty good value you if you're just looking to get up and running and the good news is six cores and 12 threads are not going to need to be replaced in a gaming setting anytime soon now there are certainly reasons though regardless of all this railing against the xeon 1650 that i've just done there are still reasons that you may want to invest in this older platform for example maybe you're coming from an older platform also a ddr3 platform specifically if you already have ddr3 ram this gives you a great excuse to reuse it without having to buy brand new RAM because right now, like I said, with that Ryzen 5 1600 system, the RAM here is $150 for 16 gigabytes of it. If you already have eight gigabytes of DDR3 laying around, just buy eight more gigabytes and add it to your system. Or better yet, if you already have 16 gigabytes laying around, you're already in good shape and you're set already. DDR3 is quite a bit cheaper than DDR4 still. So if you do have some of that RAM laying around, it's actually a great way to save money by getting on the X79 platform instead of something new like the B350 platform. So of course, this is where I kick it back to you guys. I am curious. If you are getting ready to build a new computer and you're looking for at least six cores and 12 threads, would you even be open to buying something like an older series Xeon chip or would you definitely wanna hop on something newer like a Ryzen 5 processor or maybe you have more money to throw around and you actually wanna go with the mainstream Intel stuff like an 8700K, let me know down below. And of course, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Those things help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.